A gigapixel image is comprised of 1 billion pixels or more. While modern DSLR cameras generally use a sensor with around 20 million pixels, or 20 megapixels, there are only a couple of cameras to date that are capable of directly imaging a gigapixel image. Most current techniques involve precisely combining high-resolution digital images as a mosaic. Due to the large file size of these ultra-high-resolution images, software and browsers have been created to view and interact with gigapixel images, allowing users to zoom and pan, viewing the amazing detail at will. We used a photo microscope, the Leica Z16 APO, with an LED ring light. We modified a macro focusing rail to manually control a stage that supported the daguerreotype. A manual image overlap of about 20% was generally successful. We have found Microsoft's Image Composite Editor, ICE, software to be the most reliable for image stitching for the final mosaic. The micro gigapixel image of the daguerreotype includes 112 images and nearly 16,000 by 18,000 pixels, a 1.8 gigabyte file. Gigapixel imaging results in an exceptionally detailed image that allows viewers to zoom into dust particles, biological growth, and even brush strokes found in the hand-painted details of the tablecloth. But the equipment cost can be quite high, and without an automated XY platform, the manual image acquisition can be time-consuming. Having covered the visible light imaging techniques, including normal raking and specular illumination, we will quickly touch on a bit of multispectral and hyperspectral imaging that we have done. Since infrared photography is part of condition assessment and material identification within conservation, we thought it worthwhile to take a look at, a, at the daguerreotype with the hand paint and pigment to see what we would find. Infrared reflectography is the recording of the variable absorption and reflectance of infrared light by an object. We used a Xenix XC117B with a spectral range of 0.9 to 1.7 microns that utilizes an uncooled in-gas detector. Digital infrared imaging was chosen to determine if wavelengths beyond the visible might intensify the contrast of the image. And in this case, the red pigments used for the hand painting of the cheeks and bow tie were highly reflective. Hyperspectral imaging is a non-destructive imaging technique originally developed for applications in remote sensing and astronomy that has found uses in cultural heritage imaging aiding in the investigation of chemical composition, condition and deterioration assessment, and change due to environmental conditions. Hyperspectral imaging provides multiple images at varying wavelengths creating a three-dimensional data cube with the set of images covering a range of the electromagnetic spectrum. This technique is a non-invasive method of chemical characterization providing visible and non-visible information through narrow band segmentation in which the data cube can provide unique three-dimensional spectral curves for material identification. This information can provide pixel level mapping for chemical and condition comparison and differentiation. The system we used was a Surface Optics Corporation SOC 710's hyperspectral imaging system, which utilizes a silicon-based CCD and has a spectral, spectral range of 0.4 to 1 microns visible to near-infrared, recording 128 bands. This is a movie file stepping through the bands progressing from 0.4 microns to 1 micron from visible to near-infrared of the bow tie on the portrait of Clara. Taking into consideration the need to document the image and condition of daguerreotypes for research and conservation purposes, along with the added urgency of recording the image due to the fragile surface, digitization is an essential aspect of tending to the object. As mentioned previously, daguerreotypes are particularly challenging objects to image with their highly reflective and intricate surfaces. The ideal imaging solution for documenting a daguerreotype would be a high-resolution, efficient, low-cost, multi-use setup with image consistency and reproducible conditions, a technique that does not yet exist as a single solution. While this is in no means an exhaustive list of techniques for imaging, we feel that it covers a good range, including expensive and inexpensive, high resolution and ultra resolution, and inefficient to efficient, with the addition of the DAG house as a setup that can be used for a variety of techniques. Many of these techniques can be affordable and accessible and involve equipment already in a photo studio. These are, for the most part, very doable techniques. 
I have borrowed this image from a presentation I saw last month, as I feel that it applies to a lot of the imaging that we do. One size does not fit all. There's not a single imaging technique that is a perfect solution for imaging daguerreotypes for research and conservation. But by understanding available techniques, the strengths and weaknesses of these techniques, and the information they could provide will help inform a decision for digitization. We hope that this presentation has provided a comprehensive but not exhaustive reference for those trying to digitize their daguerreotype collection. There's also a paper in progress that describes the techniques in more detail. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions at all, our email addresses are listed at the top of the slide. To see more about the work we have done, check out our Imaging Studio website and the Understanding Early Photography website. Thank you again.